Welcome back friends. In this video we will be talking about uh, apoptosis mediated by cytotoxic killer cell. Okay. So what we know usually about the T cells is that uh, T cells are of two different types. One is the effector T cells and another one is the helper T cells. Now the effector T cells types are those cells which usually take the responsibility of killing uh, the malfunctioning cells inside our body, right? So here we'll be talking about uh, cytotoxic T cell killing. Cytotoxic T cell mediated killing. Okay, that means how cytotoxic T cells, uh, CTLs, kill uh, the malfunctioning cells or bad cells or infected cells in our body. So let's say here it is uh, the T cell. So let me draw the structure of the T cell. So say this is the T cell. Now this T cell uh, is very very special because this is having a nucleus and uh, here it also say it is having some granules inside. Now this granules of T cell, let me draw here. So this is a granule, this is another. So these are the granules. Now the granules inside the T cell consists of many different types of molecules. So among those molecules, uh, two are very important. So I am drawing those molecules. One is this red one, which are called granzymes. Another one is this black ones, which are perforins. Okay. So we are having these two major chemicals, which are helping these T cells to kill infected cells, perforins and granzymes. Okay. And they are uh, held together. So let me write them first. So this is granzyme. And this one is perforin. And they are held together by this green protein here. And this protein here is termed as surglycine. This is not that glycine, this is surglycine protein, which is uh, holding this granzyme and perforins together. Okay, now this is a T cell. So let me write it here again T. So this is a T cell. Okay. Now it is also having T cell receptor which is a very very important component of T cell. Remember? So this is TCR or T cell receptor. Okay. Now the signaling that we are going to see between this T cell and the infected cell. Suppose this is the infected cell. In all this kind of infected cell that we are talking about. Let's say this is one. In all of this infected cell or antigen presenting. So usually it's not antigen presenting cell. Suppose this is an infected cell. Now all the cells inside our body are having class 1 MHC molecules. So here let's say this is a normal kind of cell. Now it is infected by a pathogen. Now after the in in infection using uh, or by the pathogen, what it does is that they take those antigenic part of the pathogen. It will chop those part and it will uh, attach them using MHC and it will serve this uh, with the MHC complex outside. So let us see here, this is the MHC complex. Let's say this is the MHC complex and here is, this is the antigen. So let us change the color for the antigen here. Let's say here. So this is the antigen. This red thing is the antigen for example. Okay. So let me draw. This is the antigen. Let's just write as AG or antigen. Okay. Now this is the MHC class 2 molecules or MHC class 1 molecules. Let's say whatever. This is MHC class 1 or MHC class 2 molecules uh, holding, this, holding this antigen molecule out. Okay. Now here comes the interaction. So this is the infected cell. It is holding that antigenic portion using MHC class 2 molecules or class 1 molecules and holding it outside. Now here it is. This is the TCR. Using the TCR, it detects this signal. Now, the detection is not uh, mediated only using TCR and MHC complex, but also it requires some other co-stimulatory molecules to engage, right? Because this interaction is not enough to provide the signal to T cell to kill them, right? Now, this is called the cytotoxic T cell, or uh, so let's say TC cell or cytotoxic T cell, right? Now, these cells are having these granules. So these granules will be fused with this plasma membrane and the chemicals will be released only when it gets a signal 
from this infected cell to kill it right but this for getting the signal this tcr and mhc complex interaction is not enough so what we require several round of expression of other regions so say here it is uh, another thing which can come this is called the b7 this is another co-stimulatory molecule b7 now this co-stimulatory molecule is projected by this infected cell outside now this t cell which is present here it is having a co another co-stimulatory molecule on its own this is called cd28 now using this cd28 well, let me tell you this is the cd28 here it is cd28 using cd28 it can recognize b7 now using this mhc uh, using tcr it can recognize mhc1 along with the antigen now it can detect the presence of antigen it can provide a signal to this t cell and this signal will uh, eventually tell this cell to fuse this granules with the cell membrane so that it can release this enzymes outside okay so the signal internal signal is done and release of this cytotoxic uh, so components like this granzymes or perforins are released outside. Now once that is released outside, this perforins and granzymes are attached with this infected cell. Okay, so suppose all these things are uh, just completed. Now here it comes. Here it comes. This is sarglycin which disassembles and here it is using this perforin. So let me draw here. This is the perforin. Remember? These black things are the perforins which are required to make a hole on the infected cell membrane so that granzymes can enter. So here it is, sarglycins are attached to it like that and as a result of that they will hold on to this structure, perforins help in creating pore and using this pore, these granzymes enter inside the cell. So granzymes enters inside the cell. Now after the entry of the granzyme, this the work for sarglycin and perforin is done. They will release this place. Now these granzymes will do the further downstream events that will eventually kill this infected cell. Now what are those events? Now these granzymes are uh, acting in uh, two different ways. One way is to activate, uh, one way is to increase the permeability of uh, mitochondria of this cell so that cytochrome C can come out. Because cytochrome C, the level of cytochrome C inside the cytoplasm is the dictation or the signal for the cell to live or dead, right? Now, that is called the apoptosis or programmed cell death. And the way this TCL kills this cell using or ins insulating or ex accelerating this, accelerating this particular programmed cell death process. So, it's simply accelerating the natural programmed cell death process of a cell, right? And what we can do for this natural uh, cell death or apoptosis so let me write it here apoptosis what is required see important step one step is that one step is to release of cytochrome c okay from mitochondria this is the first thing second thing is lipid asymmetry lipid asymmetry and third thing is obviously uh, nucleic acid degradation these are the three major steps for apoptosis right so if you study apoptosis these are the three major steps and if you study the apoptosis using different chemical molecules fluorescent molecules to so tag you can find these things happening all the time simultaneously so that the cell will die right so these are the things now here what we can see this T cell will mediate this apoptosis it will upregulate the action of this apoptosis right now how by secreting these granzymes now as the granzymes entering it will act both this way it will change the lipids it will change this it will uh, uh, accelerate the release of cytochrome C from mitochondria as well as it will help to degrade this nucleic acid or DNA sequences okay how it can achieve that remember inside this cell what we are having we are having so we are looking at two different uh, processes so first process is that there is mitochondria so let's say let me draw the mitochondria it say it, this is the mitochondria okay say this is the mitochondria now this mitochondria is having cytochrome c inside it now the first important signal is that this is having some transporter present in mitochondria but they are blocked right now there is also a protein called bid or bid now this BID protein is helping 
to close that transporter of mitochondria so that cytochrome C cannot come out to the cytoplasm, right? But once these granzymes are entering, this granzyme will act, will will cleave this BID, will cleave this BID in such a way. Now BID is present normally in inactivated form. Now due to the activation of BID using granzymes, this BID can go and can sit onto this pore and it will open the pore complex of mitochondria. Now due to the opening of the pore of mitochondria, this cytochrome C will come out. So let's say here, cytochrome C will come out. So this is the first event. So this part is done using the granzyme, right? So we need to succeed these two, at least two of them to get the apoptotic signal, right? So first thing is done, this BID is being uh, inactivated uh, or VSD is being, uh, it is previously inactivated, now it is activated using granzymes because suppose say this is a BID molecule, uh, it is bound with some uh, inhibitor sequence, say this, this is the inhibitor sequence, this is the inhibitor and this is the BID. Now what, what granzyme does, granzyme will go and kick this inhibitor out of this place. As a result, what it does, it will leave this BID free. Now as a result of this BID is activated, it can go and act. Right? So this is the process of activation. This is the first thing that we have seen. After that, what we require, we also need to degrade the nucleic acid sequence, nucleic acid component and that are present in nucleus. Now what we need to do, these granzymes again, these granzymes will go. Now as the cytochromes are coming out, cytochrome C's are coming out, the cytochrome C again trigger the change to make this lipid asymmetry because there are lipid asymmetry inside the cell. That means, for example, uh, phosphatidyl serine usually presents here in, inside this cyto cytoplasmic region. Now it, it is flipped outside. This kind of flipping will trigger or it is getting the signal or providing the signal to rest of the killer cells to kill this cell, right? So these are the signals that are coming out. Okay, now it also triggers this repeat asymmetry. So it's done. Now final thing remains is the nucleic acid degradation. Now how it can be achieved? Again, uh, the major thing is this granzyme. So this granzyme will go and there is a protein called CAD. Okay, or uh, so it's, it's called the uh, nucleic acid degradating protein or CAD. CAD which is called caspase activating uh, protein or there is a pro caspase, right? So we know that uh, during this degradation procedure, there are downstream signaling or signal amplifications that we are going to see. Now this granzyme will go and it will activate an apoptotic protein which is called pro caspase 3. It is called pro caspase 3. So let me write it here. Pro caspase 3. Okay. So this pro caspase 3 is getting activated. Now as it is getting activated using this granzyme, they are going to cleave what is called ICAD or inhibitor of the nucleic acid degrading domain or of a protein. So remember this CAD I am telling you, CAD. CAD, I forgot the name of a uh, full form of CAD but it is the name of this protein CAD which functions to go inside the nucleus and cleave the DNS, uh, DNA sequence or to cleave this nucleic acid sequence. That is the job of this CAD protein which is a dangerous apoptotic protein. So what we need to do usually if we leave this CAD as it is inside the cell it, will, it is going to kill a cell. So what we do, we itself, we block this CAD using another protein. It is called ICAD. So it inhibits the activity of CAD. It is called inhibitor for CAD or ICAD. Okay, so usually ICAD block the activity of CAD. Now due to the granzyme activating Procaspase 3, now this active form of Procaspase 3 can go and degrade ICAD. It will degrade ICAD. As a result, it will cleave ICAD out. Now CAD becomes free, so it can be active now. Now this CAD will go through the nuclear pore inside the nucleus and it will degrade the nucleic acid. So final term, it will glow, go and nucleic acid degradation will be obtained or will be achieved. So due to this process, we'll, we are fulfilling th three of our apoptosis signals, then the cell will start to bulge out and they start to die, right? So this is the process. So I am telling you again, first thing is that granzymes are coming, 
two way response one is this, uh, it, it is activating bid so the bid will go and it will bind to the uh, transporter complex of mitochondria so that cytochrome C's uh, can come out now after that this renzyme can again go activate procaspase now this procaspase C which is the activated form it can uh, cleave the ICAD which is the inhibitor of CAD a catabolic uh, activator domain uh, protein which can go and cleave the nucleic acid sequences now as the ICAD are degra uh, is degraded by procaspase 3 the CAD becomes free it will go and degrade the nucleic acid so as a result nucleic acids are degraded lipid asymmetry is changed as well as cytochrome C concentration in cytoplasm are getting increased all of these things bring about the death of the disease cell so this is the process of how T cell usually depict a cell and kill that cell. Okay, so that's it and I hope that's helpful. Thank you.